I would prefer not to make my coworkers the topic of any of my videos. However, as archetypical examples of Bible Belt mentality, it's difficult to avoid focusing on them occasionally. Not too long ago, I had a conversation at work with a woman I will call Jane. The subject of our conversation was controversial, and probably will be for many of my viewers as well. Before I tell you the topic, I'd like to set some expectations up front. The goal of this video is not to convince anyone that the position I held, and still hold, is a true one. I am not interested in having that particular argument here. It's tedious. The point is to illustrate precisely how irrationality looks in action. My claim is not that Jane was irrational because she disagreed with me. In fact, if she hadn't accepted my position, I wouldn't have had any grounds for thinking her irrational in this case. It was precisely her acceptance of my position that was the catalyst for her irrationality. The discussion was about milk. She told me about someone she knows who only drinks three beverages, water, orange juice, and milk. Jane, who is a fan of carbonated beverages, couldn't relate to such a limited menu of drinks. Then she said, well, at least she's drinking stuff that's good for her. I responded, the water and orange juice are good, the milk not so much. Like the average person, Jane found this remark surprising and wanted to know why I questioned the nutritional goodness of milk. Since she asked, I told her some things about milk that most people don't know. I'm not going to rehash those things here because I have no vested interest in convincing the YouTube community that milk is bad. If you enjoy believing that milk is good for you, you can find plenty of convincing support for maintaining that belief, or you can simply believe it without looking for any evidence. If you are interested in the possibility that perhaps milk isn't as good for you as many people currently believe, you will have no trouble educating yourself on that topic if you really want to know. Suffice it to say, I have researched this topic to my own satisfaction and maintain the position that dairy products are unnecessary and largely harmful. Research it if you want, or don't. Just don't argue with me about it because I don't care enough to bother. This is old news for me. For those who may object that speaking with Jane about this topic indicates that I really do care and would like to argue about it, I will clarify. When this topic arises naturally in conversation at work or even among friends, I may be willing to engage in it just for the sake of passing the time. However, this is very low on my list of priorities for spending my free time. Something I will prioritize is the observation and analysis of irrationality, so please humor me and focus on this aspect of my story rather than on whether or not bovine dairy is good for humans. For the purposes of this video, it is completely irrelevant whether or not my claims about dairy are true. Now back to the story. Jane listened to what I had to say. She was amazed and horrified by the things I told her. At first, she expressed skepticism about my opinion, which was a completely appropriate thing for her to do. But it didn't take much to overcome her objections and convince her that milk isn't healthy for humans unless it comes from a human mother's breast. I was actually alarmed by how willing she was to believe me. When someone presents me with an idea that counters conventional knowledge, I don't reject or accept it without learning more on my own. I research and come to my own conclusions. She was simply prepared to accept what a co-worker told her as truth. But this wasn't the deeply irrational part. Irrational, perhaps, but not as irrational as what followed. The thing that really blew my mind was that after she accepted my claims, she said the following words. Well, I'm still going to teach my children that milk is good for them. Now, if she had not accepted my claims, this wouldn't be an irrational remark. But the point is that she had. You may object that perhaps I only thought she accepted my claims, but really she hadn't, and this was her way of letting me know that she had not. 
It's difficult, without audio or video footage of the exchange between us, to demonstrate her acceptance of my claims, but I can tell you that it was apparent to me. Part of her trust in what I was saying stemmed from her conviction that powerful entities like the dairy lobby are the man and are not to be trusted. She trusted my information because it pointed a finger of mistrust at a powerful entity. I'll leave aside for now all the intricacies of that tangled web. I tell you this only for the sake of clarifying the sort of person I was talking to. One who will accept virtually any claim if a finger of blame is pointing to an entity much more powerful than herself. Jane believed me. Alarmingly, she didn't seem to doubt a single word I said. She accepted the claim that milk is not only not good for humans, but it is actually distressingly bad for them. And after having accepted this, she then stated that she would repeat a claim she now believed to be an overt lie to her children, just as it had been taught to her. If she had told me that her family doctor recommends milk for her children, and that she trusts her doctor's sources more than mine, I wouldn't be bothered in the slightest. Or, if she admitted that I had raised some doubts for her about the value of dairy products, but that she and her family simply liked dairy products so much, she wanted to continue to consume them despite their lack of nutritional necessity or goodness, I wouldn't be bothered about that either. For the record, I still consume dairy products, despite my awareness of their questionable nutritive value. I don't think it's a big deal for people to do things that are unhealthy. To a certain extent, nearly everyone does. So what? Big deal. Candy bars aren't good for us. No one has any delusions that candy bars are healthy for children, but most parents will allow their children to eat the occasional candy bar. However, most of us would be surprised if we heard a parent say to a child, eat up your candy bar, it's good for you. Especially if we knew that parent held the belief that candy bars are, in fact, bad for their children. There were so many completely valid and rational ways for Jane to disagree with my assertion that milk isn't really good for people. She chose to agree with me without researching for herself to investigate my claims, and then repeat what she now believes to be a lie to her children. Drink your milk. It's good for you. To fully accept a claim, and then consciously and deliberately choose to teach your children the precise opposite of that claim, is a rationality at its most naked. I confess that, despite all of the ludicrous behaviors I've seen, this one still shocked me. New information will not change Jane's position, even if she accepts and believes the new information. There can be no traction in an unchangeable mind. What could possibly penetrate such a mental fortress? There are no doors, no keyholes, no keys. This, my friends, is a rationality. I will always prefer disagreement to something as horrible as this.